Hello students, welcome to Adventist University of the Philippines. Here's what you need to prepare for a laboratory. What to prepare for in the laboratory? Personal protective equipment. Students are required to provide for themselves the following personal protective equipment for this laboratory. Laboratory gowns that cover most of the arms, the legs, and the torso sufficiently while providing comfort to the wearer. Closed-toed shoes to protect the feet from spills and cuts from broken glassware. Safety glasses to protect the eyes from accidental spills and flame bursts. Safety glasses may be borrowed from the lab counter. Latex gloves or hand protection of similar material to avoid skin contact with chemicals and prevent fingerprints from interfering with the analytical weighing. Laboratory equipment and supplies. Students will be issued lockers with the basic glassware in pairs, although a lot of procedures will require cooperative group work. Lockers must be secured with a padlock to avoid unnecessary and costly damages. Students must provide their own means to clean their glassware, such as dishwashing detergent, scrubbing pads, and tissue papers. Lighters will be needed to light up lab burners. Students must have their own lighters for this purpose. Many procedures will require test tubes to be labeled. Prepare for this. Laboratory facilities. Proper use of laboratory facilities is required for safety and error-free results. Operation of any equipment requires training and demonstration from the laboratory instructor. Seek the assistance from your lab instructor should you need it. Limitations of the number of certain lab equipment may require queuing up on the part of the students. Laboratory Safety Orientation The experiments in a chemistry laboratory are designed with safety of the students in mind. Although hazards of some kind may not be avoided, a student who is conscious of his or her personal safety as well as the safety of others has no good reason to be involved in an accident. Safety Equipment Inside the Laboratory Room First one is the fume hood. Used when experimental procedures require it, usually when toxic fumes and unpleasant odors are produced. To extend life of the monitor and prevent overheating, the fume hood is switched off whenever it is no longer used. Next one is safety or emergency shower. Used when a hazardous chemical is spilled on the body. Next is safety or emergency eye wash, used when hazardous chemical is spilled on any part of the face. Fire extinguisher, used when fire is contained in a small area and is not spreading, used only after everyone has safely exited the room, used only if you know how to use it. Shut of valves from gas and water. Locate the shut-off bulbs for your laboratory room and differentiate between the on from the off position. Students nearest the bulbs are responsible for shutting off the bulbs in case of emergencies. Emergency exits. Identify the doors to be used as emergency exits and the direction where you must go during an evacuation. Use 
designated exit doors based on their location. For example, students in tables 1 and 2 will take exit door 1 while students in table 3 and 4 will take exit door 2. Identify doors that do not lead to exits such as stock room doors. Personal protective equipment. Laboratory gowns. Used as first line of defense against hazardous chemical spills, for example, acids, strong bases, etc. Must be knee length to provide protection to the uniform. Students must have their own lab gowns, which they must wear every lab time, or else they may be expelled from the laboratory. Lab gowns must be purchased from tailoring shops, bookstores, or laboratory supply shops. Safety glasses. Used to protect the eyes from accidental splashes of hazardous materials as well from flames coming from a burner. Must be worn at all times during the performance of an experiment. It must be continued to be worn as long as somebody is still doing his or her experiment inside the lab room. Option is available for each student to procure their own safety glasses to ensure that the ones they use are clear and are free from scratches. Safety glasses such as those used by this laboratory are available at bookstores, hardware shops, biking accessories shops, and sports shops. Always wear closed shoes in the laboratory. Open-toed shoes and sandals are susceptible to injury from spilled acids and broken pieces of glassware. Long hair must be neatly put up in a ponytail or bun to eliminate instances where hair catches on fire or is dipped in chemicals as the student works. Never eat or drink in the laboratory. If you have to rehydrate, carefully wash your hands and take your water bottle out in the hallway and drink there. Eating and drinking in the laboratory presents risk of ingesting contaminated substances. Eat well before coming to class. Avoid running inside the laboratory. You could trip, bump into someone carrying something, and injure others. Wear no jewelry inside the laboratory. Jewelry may get caught into moving machinery like centrifuges and electric motors, and they may dangle into chemicals and be a source of contamination. Music, cellular phones, and headphones must be hidden from sight while work is going on. Aside from these items becoming distractions to the laboratory student, loss or damage to these items may also happen. Waste Disposal Protocols Proper waste disposal must be followed in order to avoid environmental contamination and remain compliant to government regulations. Always follow waste treatment instructions as enumerated in your laboratory procedures. Liquid waste is collected in appropriate containers inside fume hoods, while non-hazardous solid waste is disposed of in lab trash cans. For the information of all laboratory students, all hazardous waste produced in the lab are being contracted to a chemical waste transporter who takes them to a chemical waste treatment facility. What to do during emergency situations? Chemical spills on the body. In case of chemical spills on the body, remove the laboratory gown immediately and remove all contaminated clothing as much as possible. Proceed to the emergency shower, faucet, or eye wash, and let running water flow through affected part for about 15 minutes as a first aid measure. Chemical spills on clothing. Simply remove affected clothing and wash any body part which may have come in contact with the hazardous chemical. Chemical spills on the face. Proceed to the emergency eye wash 
and wash affected part with running water for about 15 minutes as a first aid measure before proceeding to the clinic. Fire on clothing. Take off the clothing that has caught on fire. Persons nearest may also cover the person with his or her own lab gown to extinguish the fire. Fire on lab table. Shut off source of gas for the table. Person nearest the room shut off valve must also switch the gas valve to prevent the fire from spreading. Fire on building. If the building is on fire, use the designated exits and leave the room. Proceed to the designated assembly area for a head count. Earthquake. In any event of an earthquake, keep calm and stay where you are. Find a place away from falling objects such as ceiling fan. If you run outside the building, there is a danger that you might get knocked unconscious from dizziness or by falling debris. After shaking has subsided, proceed to the designated exits without delay and meet at the designated assembly point. Accidental release of toxic fumes. In case of toxic substances released into the air, wet your lab gown with water and use this as an emergency gas mask while finding your way out of the building. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck and God bless in your laboratory experiment. Thank you.